<laughs> Welcome to Straight Talking with Kelly. This is the show that interviews some of the most talented, creative, and intelligent people from various industries, sharing their wisdom, tips, and resources. Today, my guest is Mr. Carlos Stanfield, the creator and manager of the Bay Area Zone group, Tony, Tony, Tony. We'll be, be, we will be discussing our love of music uh, and our passion for music. But before I turn it over to Carlos, I want to know, Carlos, do you remember how we met? <laughs> Not exactly. Uh, we, as we were last talking, we thought it was through Jane Terry, one of the artists that I was actually um, playing bass and songwriting with. We were on a, we were on a local, <clears throat> a local independent label called Lovejoy Records here in the Bay Area. And uh, so uh, Jane and I were artists on that label. Okay. Oh, so you were an artist along with her? Uh, well, I was a studio musician. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go. Well, welcome to the show. You're glad to be here. So, Carlos, now I've known you for a very long time. I know that when I did meet you through Jane Carey, I was working at KKSF Radio at the time. Right. And also at the Plant Recording Studio. Right. And that's when I introduced you to Arnie. Mm -hmm. And you had the, the guys go do their, it was their second album, right? It was the second album, right. And we, uh, we Arnie was the, was the um, I think he was the head engineer at the record plant over in Sausalito. He owned the record plant at that time. No, he was the owner of the he record plant. Okay. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, so, you didn't know that, huh? No. Yeah. I didn't remember yeah. that. Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. And so I do remember it was the second album. So tell me a little bit about your background and how you got into music and then transitioned into artist management. How did that take place? Uh, it was all just a, a process. It was an accident. What happened was, I, I, like I said, I was, I was working over as a studio musician playing bass at uh, Lovejoy Records. Okay. And um, um, over in East Oakland, and uh, we were writing an uh, uh, album for Jane Terry. And so we finished the album for Jane Terry and for the other gentleman, Charles Green. And his, he was, his name was Chaz. And we did those two albums. And after we completed the albums, the record label didn't have any promotion staff. So what I did was uh, I just decided that uh, with my speaking ability, with my sales ability, I kind of put that professional uh, sales ability to work and went out and started going to all the local radio stations. And I was able to get actually get airplay on um, uh, on those two album on those two records by the label. And that's uh, that's probably why I met you at KKSF because we were getting Jane Terry and Charles Green. Charles were were being uh, played on 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 uh, your radio station. Okay. okay. <clears throat> well, now, talk to me a little bit more now about the how you segued out of that. Well, it was actually kind of like the same thing. And how did how did Tony 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 come about? Um, well. Tony, Tony, Tony came about because Dwayne, <clears throat> Dwayne Wiggins, which was one of the members of the Tonys, one of the lead singers, he, um, he was uh, also uh, uh, a, a doing a studio work over at uh, Lovejoy Records. And so after we finished doing all that material, Dwayne decided that he wanted to start a group with his little, his little brother, Raphael. And some of their band members, all of them were uh, uh, either current members or ex-members of the Castellers, which was the um, uh, high school uh, jazz band. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so we just decided to, to start uh, writing music and coming in the studio and recording those guys. And um, it, it took off so well that obviously... Um, it had potential and everybody around, we all knew it had potential. So we filled out the group with some other friends of theirs from Castle Mount High School and started the band. And I started to do the same thing. I went around getting uh, airplay, local airplay. And then I made a demo tape 
and started my move into Los Angeles as far as going down there and shopping a record deal. That was the old days of shopping record deals with demo tapes. Yeah. yeah. And then what, uh, yeah. what, what label did they end up getting on when they first got signed? The label was a, a polygram label um, called um, um, Wing Records was the label that we signed to. It was actually a, a, a record label under the polygram. So, well, and so then we know the history. They ended up becoming a really good group. Mm-hmm. Wonderful stuff, making one songs. I know my favorite song was uh, It Feels Good. Okay. I love that song. <laughs> Speaking of which, this would be a great segue into um, where we can actually start mm-hmm. talking about uh, R&B a little bit, because you and I had talked about that a little bit mm-hmm. in terms of what it was, what's going on with it. Uh-huh. So as you know, I want to read this to you. Um, R&B actually was um, the name that was coined by, what's his name? Oh, shoot, at Atlanta directors, Jerry Wexler. Okay. Jerry Wexler t- coined that term because back in the day, in the 40s and the 30s, and up until, I guess, the 60s, they would call Black music race music. Uh-huh. And so when uh, he was working for Billboard magazine at the time, Mm -hmm. and so Mm -hmm. he felt that that name race music was very demeaning. Mm -hmm. And so that's when he coined the term R&B, rhythm and blues. Okay. And then it actually, you know, um, took off. And so that became the new buzzword for for our music. Uh Um, Now, so who are some of your favorite R&B artists? Oh, well, I go way back in the music in the 60s. Uh, you know, all the usual, the, all the Motown artists, of course. Smokey Robinson, the Temptations, uh, the Supremes, uh, okay. um, uh, Edwin Starr, uh, all those old artists. And then uh, we then we had, uh, you know, uh, um, um, Isaac Hayes and Barry White and, you know, all the all the top uh um, the most um, influential and popular R and B artists. I I, I love. I liked all of them. The, the music was great back at that time. It was a great time for music in the sixties and seventies. When you said that, the people that came to my mind, I started thinking about Jerry Butler. Oh, yeah. oh the Ice Man comment. Oh my God, mm-hmm. I used to love me some Jerry Butler. Um, and my Motown artist, of course, was. I won't even say the Jackson Five because that's just a given. But right. Smokey, Ro- Smokey Robinson, Stevie Wonder, all of those. Marvin well. Gaye. And then like you yeah, know Aretha Franklin. Marvin yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, what's going on? Classic. My favorite all time of all records. That's right. Um, but yeah, uh, you know Aretha Franklin. There were mm-hmm. so many wonderful artists. Mm-hmm. That makes me think about what's happening with music now. Do you feel mm-hmm. that? we still have really good R&B music or is it missing something? What do you feel? Well, with me being old school, um, you know, and not understanding, I have young, I have kids that are in the, their thirties and all in the music that they like today. You know, it's about the, for me, it's the lyrical content and uh, the beats are the same. The music is the same there. You know, it's just that the, the, I I I don't gravitate toward that that the the lyrical content these days uh, some of this current music and um, as a society and socially I think we could do without some of it they'll probably hate me for saying that but uh, I really do I just think that music is and as we t- spoke the other day you know music is uh, it's enlightening it's educational it's inspirational. It, and that's what it should be. And good music is all that good music from the fifties, the sixties, the seventies, all that R and B music. I mean, who, who, you know, uh, 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 social music, Marvin Gaye, uh, what's going on album. You, you, you have people like, um, you know, uh, people get ready. There's a change of coming, you know, those kinds of songs that, that, that is what I miss. Yeah. 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 And, uh, 
when you said that, I started thinking about Sam Cooke's song, A Change Is yeah. Gonna Come. That's right, Sam Cooke. Yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. The, the lyrical content is different, but of course that all changed when rap music came about. That's right. And so, but, you know, and I'm gonna tell you something, after I got out of the music industry, I don't remember what year I got out, I think it was the early 200s in the mm-hmm. 2000s. Mm-hmm. And so I really have not kept up with the music. So I don't, and so what you're saying is that with the R&B music, the mm-hmm. lyrical content is still crazy or is it just the rap music? Well, it's rap music because that that's what the, the rap music is R&B music now. That's what's playing. That's true. That's, what, yeah. that's where, it's, where it's going. <clears throat> well, I don't know as long as the record companies are, well, but now people are not necessarily going through record companies anymore either. That's They're right, live yeah. streaming and doing their own stuff. So I think that um, there was a time when, you know, the label, the record labels, that's what they wanted to promote. They wanted right. to promote that kind of right. craziness. But I think uh, young people are just doing that on their own now. Do you think it'll change? Well, I certainly hope so. And, you know, and I'm, I, I, I just can't believe that there's not good music still out there. But it's what the record industry and the radio industry have decided they're going to play. And that's what they're going to put out uh, in, on the airwaves. And um, it's sort of like, uh, if you ask me, it's kind of gotten to the place where they're willing to, to sacrifice the minds of our young people um, uh, because of the records that sell. But I can't believe, and I don't have the statistics in front of me, but I can't believe that in sheer volume that rap music is selling more than the R&B music of the 50s and 60s and 70s. I can't, I can't say that that, I, I can't believe it, that that is actually in sheer volume selling more. So I have to ask myself then, what is the, um, what, 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 what is the intent? What, what is really going on with promoting certain kinds of music over another type of music? And like I said, all that good inspirational R&B that we grew up on uh, is, is not around anymore. And I can't, but I can't believe, I can't believe that people aren't recording that music anymore. It's just not being played on the radio. I think that's true. I think it's, it's, it's just not being recorded. Now, when I think about this article that I had seen where Chuck Khan was on Steve Harvey's show, uh-huh. And, and let me read this to what you said, because he asked her, was R&B music dead? Uh-huh. And she says, um, uh, no, he asked her what was missing with R&B music. And she said, talent. <laughs> she said, talent, uh-huh. okay. sincerity. And then she says, and um, the music business is like a circus. She says, it's very ugly, it's based on competition, and it causes a lot of grief and messed up feelings between musicians and artists. Uh-huh. I, 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 I pretty much have to agree with that. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that was very interesting that that mm-hmm. was her, her, mm-hmm. her spin on it. So now, do you have any plans of getting back involved in the music industry? Well, I don't have any, uh, any uh, specific plans to get involved in it. But uh, whenever I come across something good and I hear uh, 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 hear some good music or an artist who happens to have a great voice and is putting out a certain message, you know, it, it, of course, it naturally um, promotes me to want to to want to get back into the business. Um, but it's just a matter of what ang- kind of angle do you take in order to m- promote it? The, is the radio playing it? How do you, you, you know, we used to walk in, be able to walk into a radio <laughs> station and ask the program director to play our music. And he actually had some say so about that. And I just don't know how that process works anymore. I think it's all about likes on the different social media platforms. You mm-hmm. get so many likes, then all of a sudden people <laughs> start looking at you. And, you know, and that's what people want to do. They want to see you promote yourself into get some type of success going before they decide to tap into you. I understand. But I really would I really would like to see radio and television, but we're talking about radio. I would love to see radio or if somebody, I mean, you know, ha- have a, a little just uh, uh, because most of the stuff we hear on the radio right now in terms of uh, uh, that music is they're 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 replaying all the old stuff. 
stuff that we used to play that, that you know, uh, uh, but there's no new R&B music. Means it's wide open, and that's why Kelly K is coming back. I'm coming okay. back to the scene, you know, because I know that one of the things that's lacking is that artist development. Yes, and that's what I would like to bring back, just to be able to get. I want like a a 16 year old, somebody that I can actually nurture and groom, and really get them ready, because I think what's happening, people are just putting out stuff, anything. And there's just, there's no grooming. And I would like to see that come back. So I'm definitely getting ready to get back into it. Well, you, you, you're good at it. You should get back at it. You, you, you have to get, I have to give you credit for uh, what we did, Matt, because after our first hit record and our band started to get Tony, 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 as they started to get uh, popular and were uh, being requested for radio station interviews, television shows uh, uh, that we were going doing and they didn't have any experience in that. And they got a lot of uh, experience in it and, and encouragement from you because you actually put them through some of those early tests about how to conduct yourself in, in public uh, interviews. I mean, that, that was, I, 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 uh, you kind of made that your job and I, and I let you run with it and, and uh, you have, they have to give you credit. You were the first um, somewhat uh, a teacher who uh, helped to groom them for doing live interviews. You know, one of the things, I remember Ray. Ray was like a little sponge. Mm-hmm. He, I, you know, I could talk to him about a book or anything, and he just wanted more. He wanted more. As a matter of fact, mm-hmm. he has a book of mine that he never gave back. <laughs> but I'm so glad that, you know, it, it meant something to him. Uh-huh. But yeah, so no, the, that I think artist development is definitely something that needs to come back. And guess who inspired me to get back? It was who? Mr. Arnie Frager. Oh, okay. <laughs> Arnie so. was like, Kelly, this is what you do. And, you know, let, let's talk about it. So I'm really, really excited about um, venturing off on into something new with artists. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there are a lot of young people out there that can really sing. I see mm-hmm. my granddaughter, for example, can really sing, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so I know the talent is there. I just right. think that it needs to be groomed properly and not mm-hmm. just thrown out just for, you know, the one hit wonder type thing. Remember the one hit wonders? Yeah, of course. But even yeah, some yeah. of them were groomed. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it, it, if anybody would come along, if we could just get get an independent radio station here and there that 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 would dedicate themselves to R and B music, real talent, and real singing, real performing, real instrumentalists playing, uh, people with something to say that have something to say in their lyrics. If we could just get um, uh, uh, a, a couple. Every major market should have an independent radio station where people with talent can just walk in and get interviews and have their music played. Well, come on, hook us up. <laughs> <laughs> remember, remember, uh, remember uh, stations like because uh, I used to go over there. Um, uh, I cannot think of the gentleman's name. His name was oh god, was it? K, K, not K. So, um, oh my goodness, uh, are they going to kill me because I can't think of, of his name? But it, it, it was an independent radio station over in San Francisco. Um, ah, uh, I don't know if I recall that. You would if I could just think of his name, and I, I, it'll come to me before it's all over, and. Um, uh, and I'll and I'll mention it. So, what do you think about the Star Search programs? Uh, see, now you can tell I'm old school because Star Search yeah. was what was around when I, I actually would dress artists for mm-hmm. Star Search. That's how I got involved with the image consulting end of it. But what is it, American Idol and The Voice? Those kinds of programs. I don't really, I don't watch them. Once again, um, I think that those kind of shows more hurt the business than they help the business. Um, Because if you, if you were to study the situation, those artists have to sign so much um, 
have signed away so much uh, uh, control over their careers before they're even uh, accepted for the show. In other words, if we accept you for the show, we've got you signed up for management already. We've got you signed up for a label already. We, 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 uh, uh, and the deals are terrible deals for artists, but people want to get in so badly that they're, and you know, they're not allowed to have management. So they have nobody consulting them on what they're signing and what they should or should not sign. And if you don't sign these, these, these agreements, you can't get on the show. So it's a catch 22. And I think it, it, it hurt once again, that's another thing that hurts the business and hurts the development of real musicians and artists and singers and performers. Um, but like I said, those shows are, are, I just have to come out and say it. Those, those shows are terrible. Those, those are terrible uh, uh, experiences for those artists. But where else do they get the exposure? That, you know, and I think that's what's missing. You know, we don't have venues of places where talent can actually come. So in my mind, I envision like a grooming school where you can actually have the old Motown kind of situation happening all over again because right. it works. It, it right. really does work. Um, but we have to get back to that kind of platform. Are we going to go back to that or wh wh where are we going with music? Well, you need, you need independence. You need independence in the radio business first. And that's where we need to get back to. I mean, uh, uh, like I said, every major city should have a, at least one independent radio station where a guy, where a guy like myself could just walk in with a with a great tape and ask them to play the music and, and see what the people think about it, and if they get get any calls, see if they get any interest from the people. Any any if anybody likes the music, they call in and they get to 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 and, and then the DJ asks them certain questions. What do you think about that music? How do you like that? And then if they, you know, you got something if you get a certain amount of calls from, from the public. Because, I mean, let's, 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 let's be honest about it. it uh, uh, give the audience a chance to say what they like. You know what that reminds me of? You know, I used to work for KLOK radio. Right. That was Yes, No Radio. And that's exactly how that was their format. Right. where people would call yes or no, yes mm -hmm. or no for the song. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, you know, behind the scenes, they had that all kind of figured out anyway, too. But they sure. it would at least kind of give them an idea of what people were looking for. Uh -huh. And as you said that, the first thing I thought about, you know, walking in with your record and stuff, my the first thing my mind went on was Paola. It was like, oh, my God, that would bring Paola <laughs> back. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, probably, it would, but... but uh, but, 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 you know, the, like I said, the independent stations, there's, a, there's enough time and a space and in, 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 on the radio, there's enough minutes to, to spread the wealth around a little bit. And then, uh, um, yeah, we don't want to go back to the days of payola, but uh, even with the payola, you had the guys like um, um, all the major record label heads going around you know but they, at least they still had a and r development departments in their in their record companies yeah well so when you said that okay i don't know if you've ever read that book hitman i did that's, okay I so when i first it. read hitman i was like so i had this love hate for the music industry mm -hmm. And I, that's why I really feel like I really have to come back because I didn't get to really do what I wanted to do in it because I was in it, but not in it. Right. Because I had this fear of it. And so mm -hmm. I think my saving grace, why I was able to really make something happen is when I became um, a board of governors for the Recording Academy. Okay. Where I did make sure that we were doing things in communities of color, mm -hmm. but in terms of really developing an artist the way I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it in the music industry, but I did it in my culinary programs and I do it through my my, my work at City College with my image consulting students. Mm -hmm. But I want to do it with a musical talent. I mm -hmm. want to be able to take someone, groom them, and make them a lasting sensation. Not a mm -hmm. one-hit wonder, right. not a fly-by-night, but something that's going to be sustainable. Like, the artists that we used to have, and we should still be able to do that now. 
I think so. I, I think people are really ready for that. I think people miss that. I know people my age miss it. Um, I, my, my kids don't miss it because they've never been exposed to it. But they, they don't do, know. Yeah. But they don't know what they're missing. But I, gave, I bet you if you gave them a chance and, 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 and gave their ears a chance, they would prefer to hear the temptations over some of the language in the rap music that's being presented out there today. today. I mean, they, I, I, just, I, I just can't imagine that their ears are turned off to good music and the good sound it's not but it's all they're getting if they don't have anything to compare it to then uh uh you know that's where uh, that's where we have a hole in our system because uh the, these young people just aren't being exposed to to anything uh hey I, I you know who am i to say that megan the stallion shouldn't have a record deal but Jesus Christ, give uh, give give a singing artist some place to put their music to, to expose their music out there, to and let the let the audience be the guy. Well, you know what? Hopefully, someone will be listening to us and get back to us with some incredible comments, letting us know, giving some suggestions in terms of how we can move forward with making some of this, the things that we'd like to see happen, happen. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not that we're trying to bring back old school music, but that mm-hmm. is the, the, the messages that are being presented, uplifting, inspirational. And I do know that it's some of that stuff out there, mm-hmm. but I also kind of miss the begging of keep sweat, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> you know, and we miss a little yeah. Teddy Pendergrass. So we, you know, so we had our music too. Now, so don't try to pretend like we didn't have. Uh, well, you that's, know. <laughs> that's true, but it was still, but it was still, it was, it was clean at good. least. It was clean, and it was, and it was well, talent. cleaner than yeah. And it was, but, and it was real, and it, and the talent was was real. But then when I think of that, I think about me and Mrs. Jones, and then I think right. about Betty Wright with her song, "The Clean Up Woman," and so we. You, Ours wasn't all good either. And well, it wasn't. It necessarily wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> so this, What's wrong this with me and clear. Mrs. Jones? Though that was a nice string section in that song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, it makes me think of Prince, how that was one of the things that I know that he just couldn't believe that people didn't play instruments. You're right. You know, he was just like, really, can you guys play some instruments and stop doing what you're doing? <laughs> it's like, really? Yeah. So I know that there's so much out there that could be mm-hmm. happening. But then when they took music from schools, the kids are, right. are they playing instruments? So it makes you want to holler. It, Marvin Gaye yeah. makes you want to holler. There you go. <laughs> Throw up both your hands, okay? It does, but it does make you want to holler. <laughs> yeah. It does make you want to holler. And like I said, it, 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 I think the public is suffering tremendously for it. They, they you know, they're reach urge. They just would love to to know where they can go to to hear some good music. You know, the Santanas of of the world. Yes. But, oh my God. You know, it, it, uh, it, it, the Bay Area was always a hot spot. Oakland and San Francisco for great bands, and and um, um, I just can't I can't believe that they it, it's not being missed. Well, you know, it's how I look at it. What we're really missing in music is genuine emotions, mm-hmm. just that real raw stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, people want real. Mm-hmm. And I know that um, we got to bring it to them. We still got life in us. We can bring them some of that stuff that they're, they're missing because we know it. They don't know what they're missing. So it's up to us. That's right. People in our generation to... That's right to 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 do something about it and that's why I'm, that's where i'm at right now that's where you're at on, okay that's where i plan on doing something about it at least in my way well we'll start the with best this, of my we'll, ability we'll start with this show and we'll get more people to come on your show and talk about it oh absolutely i'm, I'm actually going to have arnie on here i think arnie and i should have had arnie on here with us okay okay yeah so maybe when i have him back I'll, I'll let you know. Well, anytime uh, yeah. you would like to have me back, I'd be glad to come. You Okay, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. So now let's talk about you a little bit. Okay. What are some of the things when you think back 
were some of the obstacles you had to come because you taught uh, yourself everything you needed to know about the music industry and so sure, what were yeah. some of the obstacles you had at, in terms of trying to get a, a, an artist signed well it, it, it was a process it wasn't a I don't I wouldn't call it an obstacle but it was a process and um you know like I said you'd go out and you see something that you want and you want to invest in it you record the music um you get the band to understand what you're doing and get them on board. And then you go and, and then the person in my position goes out and, and, and does all the, and, and sells the, the concept of the, of the group or the artist to the record labels and to the radio stations. And you, 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 you that's a dead art there. You, you can no longer do that. that. I mean, the day of having a demo tape and walking in, to, and, 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 and getting somebody's interest, A&R departments, artists and, and repertoire. There's no more departments like that. You, they're used to, you could just knock on the door of any major label and if, and, and, and if they just gave you five minutes to listen to your tape. But somebody had to go out and do that. And, uh, and that's a dead art that it now that's no longer... Um, Anything, uh, it, it's, it, it, that's just not the way to do it. Now, if there are any real artists out there being discovered, it's on these, uh, all these TV shows. You know, the, all the, the shows like America's Most, most um, you know, America's Most Talent. I know, American yeah, Idol. Yeah, American Idol and, all, and those, uh, those type shows. But then, like, what about Spotify and some of the other social media networks and YouTube? There, I think people are also... And well, again, like I said, it's those getting that 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 following behind you. Yeah, well, everybody knows YouTube is wide open, right? You can anybody can put up anything on YouTube, and it's a matter of uh, hey, hey, the, the word of mouth is still the best way to sell anything. And so you put it out on YouTube, and and the word gets around that there's something good that somebody likes, and one person tells another person. See, that's still not dead, but it's certainly overwhelmed by. Uh, a lot of these other processes, but but trust me, when people hear something that is genuinely good, they tend to gravitate towards it. And next thing you know, of course, you you what do you got to do? You, you got to figure out what do I do to get a a million hits <laughs> on my YouTube channel for an artist, and yeah. that's a that's that's an art in itself. Yeah, yeah. But that's the way to do it. That's the way you got to do it these days. If you I trust, if you get a million hits on your YouTube channel, you 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 got something, and somebody's going to pay attention to it. I believe I haven't never done it, but uh, I, I I believe that 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 could be a viable way of getting uh, yourself known out there because YouTube is still a, um, a, a still a channel for uh, for being discovered and exposing artists. So that sounds like I need to be on YouTube scoping out some talent. Well, so I, you, I, I, I will start that process. And I have actually been looking around and trying to listen to it. Um, and, you know, I've always wanted to manage someone. I did manage a person, uh, a cousin of mine back in the day. Mm -hmm. That's how I got started. Right. And um, I really felt like I didn't know enough to really do what I wanted to do with that person. So mm -hmm. I actually went back to school mm -hmm. and I did get my degree in artist management and public relations. Uh -huh. And so I'm biting at the bit to get a hold of somebody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, I'm, like I said, I'm very grateful that it, with my granddaughter, I'm able to, you know, share tidbits with her and, do a little bit of artist development with her, but mm -hmm. you know, she actually sings opera. Okay. Yeah. So she's more classical. Uh, and I keep telling her, I said, Mina, sing some uh, pop music for grandma. And she, you know, she goes, all <laughs> right. So I told her to make a tape for me. I told her to make a tape. So I think I'm actually encourage her dad because her dad's also in the music industry. Oh yeah. And then I can have Orny. Take a, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can have Orny take a listen to it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So now Carlos, let's talk about, um, who were three people that have inspired you? Three people. Well, in my day, um, it was obviously Barry Gordy, 
was was somebody that I would have paid very close attention to. And uh, actually, there's not anybody else. If you if you if you're interested in doing the business of music, just study the Motown example and, and study the, what Barry Gordy did and how he did it and how he stuck to it and the talent that he had that uh, made what he presented work. See, that's the problem, though. There, you know, you it's so hard for anybody, to, to any new Barry Gordy type person to come along in these days because business is just it's not done that way. And it costs is very costly. Uh, you don't have the exposure, like I said, to the radio station. But if you're talking about starting a, in the music business and you want to be a record label, then you have to study the Barry Gordy formula if you want to um, if you want to be successful. I mean, there's enough material out, books, film, uh, shows. I just saw a show on Barry Gordy on Netflix just uh, last week, and it, it, he he tells you, you how how to do it. All you got to do is listen to him tell his story, and there's really no other way to do it. If you want to be in the music business, you need to have some talent in terms of being able to understand and know what talent is when you see it. So now that was one, Barry Gordy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not necessarily talking about people that have inspired you in the music industry, just people in general. Oh, geez. Oh, well, you want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'll go it all the way on one side and say Martin Luther King inspired me. And then okay. we'll go all the way in the other direction and say Malcolm X inspired me. OK, and, there you go. And well, then so there, we'll there go you three. Out something in between. Well, there go your three. You got Malcolm, <laughs> you got uh, Martin, and then you have Barry. Barry Gordy. So, yeah. And Barry Gordy really was important. somewhere in between those two people. Okay, you see, yeah, yeah, but those are wonderful people that you did select. Right. Right. Um, now, if you had to give a young person advice that was coming up in the music industry, what would you say to them? I would tell them to make sure you love what you're doing, love the music, <laughs> love what you're doing, make that come across in your presentation. Because if you if you have to, you, you can literally stand on a corner and play your guitar. And if the right person hears you, you can be discovered. And if that's the way to get discovered these days, then hey, but love the music first. Love what you're doing. Love, have a real love for music. Love listening to it and hearing it and love, love performing it. And not make it a, a, a always a, all about getting paid. But let's just... Say you love what you do, love what you're doing. I, that's what I would tell anybody, any artist, don't do it for the money, do it for the love of the art. Yeah. Well, that, that's really important. That makes me think of that saying, love what you do and money will follow. And if and if you if you ever get paid, be thankful and grateful, but do it for the love of the art. How do you continue to stay abreast of music? What do you do? I listen to all my oldies on my... <laughs> <laughs> you did say that earlier, didn't you? On my iPod, on my own iPod. And uh, I listen, I have all my old records and recordings on my computer and on my iPod, and I listen to that. I don't listen to any radio stations uh, necessarily, now I still have a phonograph, so I still play my records. And it's nothing like when that needle goes down <laughs> on that vinyl and you hear that little hiss. Yeah. And then bam, it comes on. Oh right. my goodness, such a thrill. There's nothing like it. I still well, have cassette tapes, okay? And I play them. You do. I I I I, I can promise you I don't I haven't seen a cassette in I don't I know in a lot tapes. of years. I have cassette tapes because I have some wonderful tapes. And, you know, I have my VHS videos. And, do you, you know, still have a phonograph? Do you play records? with? Yes, needle? I play records. Oh, you, my, record? you, you know what? I play, oh my goodness, nothing like putting a Prince album on and then I can hold the album and look at it. Right. And then I go get my Marvin Gaye. Yeah, it's, you know what? Bring vinyl back. Well, 
be honest with you, uh, vinyl is not gone. It's a it's an eclectic uh, 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 sport these days, but it's out there if you well, want to I do know, a little hunting. I, no, you don't even have to do a lot of hunting. I was actually my husband and I went walking on Mission Street yesterday, uh, mm-hmm. and um, there's a record store where they actually are buying and selling. You know. Uh-huh. They'll, they'll, I can actually bring records in and, and sell them to them. And Lord knows I will do that because I do have some records that I don't listen to. When KKSF, when Clock Radio was mm-hmm. being sold, they allowed us to take any albums that we wanted. And I did mm-hmm. get a lot. And some of the stuff I don't play. So I know I could give it away to people that could benefit from it. Yeah, I, unfortunately, uh, I... I, I got separated from all of my vinyl a long time ago and I haven't had a record player or oh, a I could, long I could time. Not imagine. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't yeah. imagine. But you know, we had a cat, my little gizmo. And you know how your records used to be in like a crate? Yeah. The cat would use it as a scratching board. And when I saw him do that, I was like, oh my goodness. So some of my albums are all scratched up because of him. The album or the album cover? The album covers. Yeah, right. The album covers are just, no, but the albums are pristine inside because I, you know, I don't touch my albums. I know how to clean them. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, I do. You can't, unfortunately, you can't discipline your cat and you can't. uh... (laughs) Well, no, he's gone now. So I don't have to even worry about that anymore. (laughs) I miss him, but my records are already ruined. The the covers are ruined. So there's no turning back. Right. No turning back. Um. So now, if you could meet your favorite artist, R&B artist from back in the day, who would it be? Uh, You know, I wish I could have uh, met Marvin Gaye, you know, but he's not around anymore. And then, um, but if let's just try to think of somebody who who's still around these days. How about um, I, I, I'd like to meet Babyface. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to sit down and talk with Babyface and meet Babyface and have a talk with him about his career. Okay. Okay. What fascinates you about him? His, his songwriting ability. Okay, songwriting. Now, do you songwrite as well? Mm, I wouldn't call it that, no. No. Okay. <laughs> I wish that was something. I wish I had a, got into that, and I did not. No, I I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm not very good with words and, and, and yeah. melodies. You know, that's 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 a that's a. If you're gonna be great in the music as an artist in music, you've got to be exceptional when it comes to melodies. Hmm. So when you put the right melody with the right lyrics, that's where a hit song starts that's where you start with a hit record but it but some people are just gifted that way and you got to be born with that because you don't make up melodies out of clear blue sky they just they come from the heart yeah yeah remember i talked about that that emotion that 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 really intense heartfelt emotion raw stuff and you take a and you take a songwriter like a like a baby face who can just crank out hit after hit. See, that's very hard to do. That's very unusual. You know, this is how you that's the difference between a one hit wonder and a real artist who who is a a a a, a, a lyric master. And and this is what baby face is. He's a lyric master and he puts it together with 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 um, melodies. And you've got to be. A, a, a melody. Well, you know what? I'm wondering, did he study Smokey Robinson? Well, he, yeah, Smokey Robinson is the other one. There wouldn't have been no Motown without Smokey That's Robinson. That's what I'm saying, but I'm thinking there probably wouldn't have been no uh, Babyface without Smokey Robinson. Could have been. You know, so could, these guys, actually, I'm sure he was um, inspired by him at some point. At some point. You, you would have to believe that somewhere yeah. along the line, he was, he, he's had a uh, personal conversations with Smokey Robinson. And you know, Smokey just turned 81. That's amazing. Yeah. And then I hear that Stevie Wonder is getting ready to move to Ghana. 
Oh, is he really? Yeah, because he's sick of the United States of America. Well, that's a whole nother story. I know we whole won't even go there. Yeah, but exactly. yeah, but Smokey is eighty-one, and you know, um, our icons are they're you know they're aging as we are as well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and just think about the things that they have left us with, the gifts that they have given us. It's just absolutely incredible. I, I agree. You know, when I think about some of the people that have impressed upon me. Now, tell me this, your nine-year-old little boy, what would he say to your grown man now? What would he say to you? So My nine -year -old, nine -year -old, your nine-year-old nine -year Carlos, Carlos. What would he say to the 80-year-old Carlos? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he would probably rap to me rap it <laughs> it would probably come off as a rap no <laughs> because nine really... years when you were nine years old you weren't rapping no, no. so I oh, yeah, just, it's hard to back. say you're... it's hard to say you know my that, that that generation they don't know very much about me and my music uh in my days in the music business i haven't been around it in that long of a time. I don't know if you understand my question. Okay. I'm what is, asking what? you to go back when you're nine years old. Okay. And so this nine-year-old boy is oh, looking okay. at Carlos, the grown man now. The nine-year-old Carlos is talking to the 80-year-old Carlos. Exactly. So Carlos, <laughs> what would he say to you? Well, he would ask you, why did you, why did you, get out of the music business why did you get away from it what happened what happened and why did you get it what would you do differently now that you um what would you do different now that you know where you're going and where you are what would you have done different <clears throat> and, and 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 i would probably have to answer them and just say i would have treated the, my relationship with my band more like a business and less like they were my nephews or kids yeah i didn't i was too close to the music too attached to the artists i was managing and i didn't treat it like a business i treated it like a family affair and um when um when 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 you can't really you can't always do that you you know business is business and family is family and if I had it to do over again, uh, it probably would have um, uh, been the best thing for them and me. Because I know that man would have done, the, if I had stayed involved in their musical business life, I, they would have been done better than what, what ultimately turned out. I think they would have done better with me. I was better for them then because i understood them i understood their music i knew what the talent was and i knew how to point the camera or direct the attention to the one who 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 um who needed the most attention at the time during during the, the whole process the process of of creating a song working on that song and 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 because like barry gordy you know somebody had to be in charge of the quality control and 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 I believe that I would have uh, uh, that they were better off with me in charge of their quality control while I was uh, while I was there. Yeah, yeah. And if I had anything to do over again, if if my, if somebody asked me what would I do over again, I would have stayed, kept it business, and less emotional. So that nine-year-old boy was really talking to you, huh? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he got you on a, a little tangent there, really mm -hmm. making you think about um things. But you know what hindsight is 2020, right? Hindsight is always 2020. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, but you did you you got them to the show and that's all that mattered. Well, yeah. Somebody got to get you to the show. Yep. That Michael Axon, that was his favorite line. Uh -huh. You know, get you to the show. So <laughs> Before we close out, Carlos, yes. is there anything that you want to leave the audience with in terms of knowing something about you? What is it that you, what takeaway would you like for them to have about you? And if anyone wants to be in touch with you, 
do they look you up on Facebook? Can they do that? They can contact you. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I don't because I don't really have a Facebook presence. I do have a Facebook page and if anybody did one. But if anybody has any questions, they can contact you. And if you think there's anything that's important to get to me, sure, I'll I'd listen. But uh um what and what was your question, the main question again? So like is there anything that you would like to leave the audience with in terms of Oh yes. Well, I would like to just tell the audience and uh, or anybody listening here that if you love something, uh, 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 put in the time to perfect it. Uh, think about it all the time. Uh, eat, sleep, and drink it. Uh, because whenever you're in a, in a creative situation, whenever you're – because you can create on the business side also. There's always somebody coming up with a – new way to do everything and that and, you know and that includes business on the business side there's always another way to do it so so uh because that's what's happened to me i've, I've completely lost track of how to do entertainment business anymore i don't know anything about uh, the, the processes the promotion processes the broadcasting uh, how do you get a song played? Who do you go to? You can't go just knock on the door of KKSF anymore. You just can't go there, knock on the door, and uh, get it uh, played. Can Can you hold on one second? Sure. Okay. Hey, well, this usually doesn't happen with uh, an artist needing to get up. But you know what? This is like real life. This is where real conversations happen <laughs> with Sorry Kelly. <laughs> no, this is where real conversations happen with straight talking with Kelly. So somebody rang your door, you had to go answer it. Well, it, it was, I had a package delivered and I didn't want them to take it back. <laughs> no, that's right. I We're here. So, um, but we were actually wrapping up where you were mm-hmm. kind of letting the audience know that to just have passion about what it is that they're doing and follow it through. That's the, that's, that's the most, uh, that's the best advice I, w- I would give to anybody young who is thinking about doing anything, uh, it, which, and that is to just have a passion for it. Love what you're doing. Anything you love. I know you heard this before. If you love it, it's not work. And if you don't want to work, then do something that you love. And that's, a, that's a really good. I like that. That's very good. Well, Mr. Stanfield, I really appreciate you being on Straight Talking with Kelly. Mm -hmm. And I will definitely look forward to having you back because I think it's kind of conversation that as I start evolving with music, I know I'll probably tap on you Mm -hmm. for some of your expertise and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, we'll Well, see. Well, I can tell you the one thing that does not change ever, and that is somebody's got to have the talent. And then somebody's got to recognize it and help it along its way. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. So I just know that um, it makes me think of the Motown thing, how he actually said that, you know, where you get the artist, plan it, develop it, and then sell it, basically. I, and know I would recommend that. that to any of your listeners that if you ever, if you got Netflix, go watch that Motown story and that Barry Gordy story. Uh, it, it's uh, I don't. It's I don't called know. Hitsville. It's called it's Hitsville. Called Hitsville, USA. Yeah. You, you watch that. Watch that uh, 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 film. That 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 would inspire anybody. But because you when you there? know where they came from, they went from nothing to everything. He went from an $800 loan from his parents. You know, Barry Gordy was my idol. And I actually had a chance to meet him. And I actually went to Hitsville. Mm -hmm. And it's such a small little studio, but they made magic happen in that place. Uh, uh, Absolutely. Understood. Magic. And I just know that it can happen again. It can happen again. Mm -hmm. And I think that it has happened again. Just, you know, it happened with Jay-Z. It happened with Puff Daddy. So Mm -hmm. it's it's happened, but just in a different Mm -hmm. way. But Barry Gordy inspired those guys. He Mm -hmm. inspired those young people to do what they do and to take back Mm -hmm. our music, so Mm -hmm. to speak. Yeah. Um, And it's just time for us to to do it again. I think you can do it again. 
you yeah. that's that's one of the uh, you know how they say you can't reinvent the wheel but i think you can actually do that with the, the music business because um it was never anything wrong with the music it wasn't broke and it didn't need to be fixed and it can just it can come back We will see about that. So on that note, I want to say thank you again for joining me on Straight Talking with Kelly. Okay. And I will look forward to staying connected. Okay. No problem. My Take pleasure. Care. Anytime. Take care, okay? Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.